So with us, we have $2 million and each of these is a hundred thousand bucks. I'm going to count it out for you. A hundred thousand, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, 600,000, 700,000, 800,000, 900,000, a million. So we got a cool million dollars. Now think about that. A million dollars is a lot of money. I mean, a million dollars is actually a lot of money, but look how small it is. That's it. This is it. We've got another million dollars here. Count it for you again. 100,000, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, another million. So we got $2 million with us. And today's vlog is very, very important. In this video, I'm going to share the 15 key lessons for tech founders and CEOs. So if you're a CEO, if you're a tech founder, if you wanna build a massive, powerful tech company business, this is the video for you because these lessons, these 15 key lessons will help you make you more successful. I've made so many mistakes, guys. I've lost literally millions of dollars, lost millions of dollars with the mistakes, so many mistakes that I made, which you can avoid if you follow these 15 key lessons below. Now, no, there's no course. I'm not trying to sell you anything. These are actual 15 lessons that you should have, uh, 15 lessons that you should take advantage of so you can build a more powerful business. So lesson number one is never have an equal partner. Now this one will sting the most. Never, never, never have an equal partner in your business, guys. Why? Because first of all, I think an equal partnership is very difficult to make decisions. Who's right? Who's wrong? Both partners are equal, permanent deadlock. So never, ever have an equal partner. I think this is something that could really, really give you a hard time with your business. At that rate, at least make sure you have like three board seats. So this way, at least the board can make a decision about what to do with the company. Because if you have just two board seats, two partners, equal partners, it's going to be very difficult for you. Lesson number two, raise less VC money. Now guys, this is something many, many entrepreneurs make as a mistake. You know, they raise so much capital, so much capital, so much capital, but then what? 90% of exits, that means 90% of successful companies get sold for less than $20 million. Now think about that. So 90% of successful companies, that's not even talking about the companies that failed. We're talking about the 90% of successful companies get sold for tw uh, less than $20 million. That means if you raise, let's say, $10 million from venture, uh, from venture, uh, from your venture backers, they have a 2x multiple in their clause. That means if you sell your business for $20 million, you will give VCs $20 million and you'll get nothing. That means you might be working five, six, seven, eight years and you'll get no money. So raise less money. Don't raise more money, raise less money. Because if you raise, let's say, $3 million, so $5 million, they have a 2X clause, $5 million, VC get $10 million on a 20 mil exit, and hopefully you and your employees get an additional $10 million. Number three lesson, focus on profits. Now guys, if you focus on profits, you're always going to win, meaning you can never go wrong if you focus on profits. Focus on your business making more and more profits. Optimize so you get more profits. You know, there's a lot of founders and they, they don't have basically what I call, they have unprofitable growth, which means even if they uh, cut off all of the growth, the business still will shut down. You should have your business in a way that even if you cut off unprofitable growth, your business still runs, your business still exists. So make sure to focus on profits because that's what everyone cares about. You know, when a lot of times like uh, companies buy your business, they are thinking about profits. Everyone's thinking about profits and nobody talks about profits. They all just talk about unprofitable revenue. So focus your business on profits because this way, no matter what happens, if you don't raise money, if you don't raise more capital, you will still be successful. You'll still hire employees, you'll still grow. Number four, sales is about process. Now guys, this is a huge, huge lesson that I learned out of pain. You know, I hired like three sales reps for my YouTube channel. I gave them the templates that sell. Meaning it's not like I hired, you know, randos. I hired three salespeople with, with two to five years experience. I gave them the templates. I said, these are the templates that work, sell. And none of them could do it. What I learned is that sales is about process. What I mean by that is like, you're gonna have to get these reps, you're gonna have to, teach them how to do everything and then you're gonna have to manage them like very actively how to do this how to do that how to do that you're gonna have to role play with them you know i learned people don't even role play if like you hire me as a sales rep i'll role play and and learn things and practice a hundred times but most reps don't they won't practice a hundred times they won't practice your pitch they won't do these things so from your end sales about process when you hire reps teach them exactly what to do and then manage them very actively and kind of this way right ease it up as they become more successful Number five, align incentives of employees. This is a huge, huge lesson for me. So for example, let's say if you have an employee who's not performing, the employee is not 
doing what's supposed to be done. Well, ask yourself, is the employee aligned to do what's supposed to be done? Is the employee's incentives aligned? I sometimes have an employee who struggles, right? And the employee struggles to do what I need. So what I do is I think about the metric they need to achieve and I usually choose like 30 day metrics. I don't do, you know, like six months long mission, like a 30 days. So here's something you could do in 30 days and here's the bonus you will get for achieving it and give them meaningful bonuses. Incentives are superpowers. What I mean by that is if you can align your employees to be aligned with the company, with your profits, with your growth, that's magic. Never forget that incentives are superpowers. Uh, and that way, give your employees missions, 30-day missions, and give them proper bonuses for achieving those missions. And before we go any further, I'd like to briefly say that this video is sponsored by DigitalOcean.com. Now guys, we get the best sponsors on this YouTube channel. We get the types of sponsors that help you grow your businesses. And DigitalOcean.com is a must. It's a must because that way you can host your website, you can host your tech product on DigitalOcean. This tool is trustworthy. This tool is reliable. That way you don't have to worry about uptime. This tool is affordable and it's simple. Meaning, don't you wanna have happy developers? Don't you want your developers not to be through some complicated tool? And don't you wanna save money? I'm sure you do. So therefore, click the link, sign up for digitalocean.com now. Like do it now so you could see how good this product is. I even saw a case study on the digitalocean.com website that said, uh, explained how a business saved 90% on their web hosting. Now, don't you wanna save money on your web hosting? I'm sure you do. So click the link, sign up for digitalocean.com now. So this way you'll have reliable, trustworthy web hosting for your tech product and your engineers will be happy, therefore you will grow faster. Number six, read for one, two hours a day. Now guys, I wake up every day at about 4 a.m. and I read for you know one hour to uh, an hour and a half every single day. This is one of the biggest keys to my success. If you wanna make money, literally, if you wanna make a lot more money, ask yourself how much you're reading. How much are you actually reading? Like, how much did you read this week? If you, if you make millions of dollars, fine. Maybe you don't need any tips. You already make millions of dollars. But if you wanna make more money, if you wanna be more successful, read guys, read one hour every single day. I do. I mean, read nonfiction books, read books about other entrepreneurs, the struggles they went through, how they built their companies. You're gonna get so many more ideas. You'll be inspired, you'll be motivated. I for sure am. If I cut off reading from my life, I think that's, one of the worst things for my business. So one of the best things for my business is just me reading these nonfiction books about other successful entrepreneurs and figures who achieved a lot of success. Number seven, wake up early. This is another critical thing I learned in a startup to wake up early. You know, I start every single day, every single day at four or 4.30 in the morning. If, if I start my day at let's say eight or nine, my day is gonna be in big trouble. Every day I start four or 4.30 in the morning. So I read for about 90 minutes and then I just start working, right? And then I work for like 10, 11 hours straight. Waking up early will make you a lot more productive. It does for me. Like well, I become sluggish and way less productive and actually get a lot less work, a lot less work done if I start my day at let's say 11 and work till 11, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., way less productive. I'll, I'll mess around, I'll, I'll, I'll eat food, like it's just too much waste happens. But if you start early, there's something magical. It's again one of the keys to success. Number eight, work hard. I can't stress this enough. You know, the one thing uh, in my earlier days that I constantly saw was that these startups who did not work on Saturdays all shut down. And I just saw that with my own eyes. I saw founders who were working on Saturdays and I saw founders who didn't. And the founders who worked on Saturdays, somehow they always became successful. They, they always outlasted the guys who were resting. And think about it like this, like, what are they resting from? So meaning if you're not successful yet, what are you resting from? Like what is the rest? It's like, it's like if you're training to be a champion in some kind of sport and then you, uh, you're resting like on Saturdays, like uh, every, Every successful entrepreneur I know works on Saturdays. So work hard. You know, we all work smart. And the people who tell me they work smart is the craziest thing because we all work smart. You like, you really think like, I don't work smart. We all work smart, but how hard you work really matters. So I'm very pro towards working really hard. For example, I work at least 70 hours a week, every week, at least. I'll work, you know, this is just standard. I work six days a week and then I'll squeeze in an additional like four or five hours on Sunday, right? From like four in the morning till let's say 10 in the morning. Number nine. Focus, this is really, really important guys. Focus on your product, in your business, do one thing. Don't have three product lines, don't have three offerings. Focus on one key thing, focus on one main product and make it amazing. Whenever I see entrepreneurs and they say, yeah, I have these four products, 
that that's so much trouble for me. Like that, I know that that's gonna, he's gonna run into so much trouble because it's, I think it's impossible to have multiple products, multiple product lines, unless let's say you're extremely successful, right? So if you're making, let's say millions of dollars already, uh, then fine, maybe then you can have multiple, not, not even millions, if you're making like $12 million a year, then maybe sure, maybe then you could have uh, uh, multiple products, but don't have any multiple products before $10 million a year. So focus one product, one service and become the best in the world at that one product and service. Number 10, own the product. Now guys, you know, I learned this uh, from Mark Zuckerberg, how he was never really able to punt off product to other like employees. He had to own product. And the reason he said that was because it's hard to find an employee with a long enough time horizon. So think about this, for me, my business is everything. 10 years from today, I'll be running my business. 15 years from today, I'll be running my business. But how about a typical employee? Well, a typical employee will switch jobs in two years. Then what type of decisions? He'll switch jobs in two years. Your product's gonna be in trouble. The employee doesn't care because he switched jobs, right? Like, but of course there are exceptions. There are these loyal, loyal long-term employees who stick with you for a long time, but those are much rarer than the, 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 the team members who switch after two years. So in summary, own your product. Know that you can never punt it off. So whatever is your key service, Whatever is your key product that you do, own it. You'll never give it off and drive it. And that way you'll make it a lot more successful. Number 11, listen to your customers. Now guys, you know, even today, so at this today, I'm CC'd in many, many of our customer emails. Not, I don't, I, don't, I don't actually reply to them, but that way I can read it. I can see what are the customers saying? What are the customers feeling? What concerns are they bringing up? So for you, I recommend be CC'd on your customer communication. Not be CC'd, but be CC'd. Why CC'd? Well, because you, you, when they reply, right? If they reply and you're CC'd, you'll get the email. So that way, not be CC'd. If you be CC'd one way, you'll only know what your, your sales rep or customer support sent. Be CC'd, see what the customers are saying. See how the customers are feeling. Uh, so that's the, you see our cash almost started falling, <laughs> leaning on it too much. Number 12, follow your instincts. Now guys, this is really, really, really important. Many times I didn't listen to my instincts and it really cost me so much. Just remember one thing, when you have that voice in you that says something, many times it's right. Because it's thousands of years of evolution and thousands of in, uh, years of instincts uh, that, that are telling you that you picked up something small. Remember that instincts, they're not loud, they're subtle, which means they're quiet. Listen to your quiet instincts, pay attention to them. Next time you're speaking to a person and he says something, ask yourself, why did he choose those words? I learned that uh, from like a uh, uh, really, really smart uh, guy and he said, Vlad, watch the words people use and ask yourself, why did he use those words? Out of every word he said, why do you use those? Because by the time a person says something to you, he's been thinking about it a hundred times, right? So in their head, he's been thinking and thinking. So by the time a little bit comes out uh, of their mouth, they've been thinking about it a hundred times. So listen to your instincts, pay attention to your instincts. Uh, Many times they're right. For me, they're like, for me, when I have my instincts, they're 95% of the time right. Number 13, don't work from home. Now guys, I'm completely against working from home. Like, I think if you're trying to make a lot of money, if you're trying to build a big business, right, if you're trying to scale your company, I don't think your solution is gonna be 10 guys in their pajamas with scrambled eggs on their laptops, sitting in their house with a barking dog and a screaming baby. I just don't think that's how you build a unicorn, that's how you build a big business. So if you're trying to make millions of dollars, if you're trying to build a big, powerful company, Everyone working from home is not gonna achieve it for you. Make them come to the office. Make them work together. Create that camaraderie, create that bond, create that mission, share money, right? Take the money you make and share it with your team members. You know, like everyone who works with me makes money. Everyone. I'm not even talking about just their salaries. I'm talking about bonus, bonuses, kind of rewards, everyone. It's one of the keys to success. But it's hard to have that when everyone's in their pajamas with a barking dog with scrambled eggs on their laptop. So don't work from home because if you work from home, you're gonna struggle to build the big business that you wanna build. Number 14, back up everything. I really mean this. You know, when I run businesses, I always ask, well, what can destroy my business? What can destroy my company? You should do absolutely the same. What can destroy your business? What can destroy your company? Is it this one key employee? Make sure not to have any key employee, which means if one employee leaves, like your business shuts down. I always have two or three even employees for each very important job. Why? Because if the team member gets sick, if the team member leaves, we're fine, right? We'll just replace them with one of the other members. So think of what could destroy your business and 
patch that up, right? So that way, if that event happens, you're still safe. You don't have to patch it two to like three to four levels out, but patch at least one level out. So if something goes wrong, you're safe and, and you, that buys you more time to patch this guy up. And number 15 lesson that I have for you guys is choose your city wisely. You know, everyone thinks that, hey, I need to be in a major tech hub. No, you do not. Choose your city wisely. You know, I've lived in, I've lived in San Francisco. I've lived in Manhattan. I've lived in Austin. I've lived in Miami, Florida. Uh, and choose your city wisely. You know, some states, the states will take 10% state income tax. That means you and your employees will pay 10% state income tax. That's so expensive, guys. So choose your city wisely. Consider state income taxes. Consider the talent. Consider the, the cost of the home homes. Why? Because you want to be somewhere where for your employees it's not so expensive to live. If it's so expensive for them just to live, they're going to need a high salary. You know what I don't like? What I don't like is the same guy that you hire in one city, you get the same service, let's say for two times cheaper in just a different city. To me that doesn't make sense. Right? Like a service is worth X amount of money irrelevant of where that person is. So from your end, I even recommend like tier two and tier three cities. That's what I recommend for building companies because that way it's not so expensive to be there, right? Like why do you want to pay a guy double the money just because of the city he's in? So be very careful about that. Consider what city should you live in? Uh, what city should you build in? And I recommend tier two and tier three cities because of the cost savings you get. And before I forget, I again like to thank DigitalOcean.com for sponsoring this video. An amazing, amazing product to host your website, to host your tech product. Sign up below. They're reliable. You'll save money on your hosting. Hope you enjoyed this video. My YouTube channel is all about entrepreneurship and scaling startups. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. And last thing, you know, I saved the best, the best for last. You can text me personally and I will help you with your business. I'm not selling you anything. I'm not going to sell you a course, nothing. You can text me, tell me the issue you have with your business, and I will help you. Everyone who texts me until April 30th, 2022. After April 30th, 2022, I won't be able to reply. So text me on WhatsApp, plus one, 720, 431, 2577, and I will reply to you the same day and help you with your business, and you'll get a video. No, this isn't gonna be my assistant. It's not gonna be some blast. It'll be me sending a video for you. So hustle hard, don't give up, and build a huge, powerful, massive business. And see you soon. Ah.